This is Tom from ThisDayInBaseball.com, and this is the podcast, The Daily Rewind. And this is where we look at five cool things that happened on November 1st, This Day in Baseball history. And before we jump into the show, I just want to give you a little bit of trivia. Can you name me the only six players in baseball history who have led off a game with a home run and then ended the game with a walk-off home run? There's only six in the history of baseball. I'm going to get to that at the end of the show. So... What I'm going to do here is I'm just going right down the page and I'm going to pick up these five cool events. And the first one here happened on November 1st, 1892. Uh, This is when statistics were kept for the first time for 154 game season. And it shows that Dan Brothers of the Brooklyn Grooms was a top hitter and he hit 335. And Cy Young of the Cleveland Spiders was a top pitcher in terms of wins with 36 wins versus 11 losses. Now, one of the interesting things, this is Cy Young's only his third season, but his 36 wins ends up being his career high. The other career high he accomplished in 1892 was innings pitched, a whopping 453 innings pitched. My next favorite, of course, is my favorite subject here is the Brooklyn Dodgers. Uh, And on November 1st in 1951, future Hall of Famer Roy Campanella hits 325, 33 homers, 108 RBIs. He wins the first of three National League MVP awards. Uh, The Dodger backstop was an every other year guy. He he won it again in 53 and 55. One of the really cool things about Campanella, if you look at his stats, is he actually walked more than he struck out. He walked 608 times in his career versus 501 strikeouts. Uh, Not something you see in 2022 baseball. Uh, Next up is on November 1st, 1968, Denny McLean. He wins the unanimous American League Cy Young Award. Uh, The right hand, he put up 31 wins for six losses, 280 strikeouts, and a 196 ERA for the world champion Tigers. He'll also win the MVP award. And next year, the 24-year-old is also going to win his second Cy Young Award. Now, if you looked at the two years combined, McLean starts 82 ball games. He wins 51 of them, and he faces an amazing 2,592 batters in 666 innings pitched. Now, McLean, uh, all this wear and tear in his arm and his lifestyle and a lot of other things kept him out of base. His career would only last another three years, and uh, he would really uh, struggle, too. He would only go 22 and 41 uh, over his final three years. We hop hop all the way up to 2010, uh, and there's Tim Lincecum. Uh, He pitches eight strong innings on November 1st in 2010 to best uh, Texas Rangers Cliff Lee uh, for the second time of the series. And uh, series MVP Edgar Retneria becomes uh, a piece of history. Uh, He drove in the winning run when the Marlins beat the Indians in the 11th inning during game seven in 1997. Uh, He joins only three other players, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, and Yogi Berra. So he becomes just the fourth player in history to collect two World Series winning hits. His was, uh, in this one, was a three-run shot off of Lee in the seventh inning that leads the Giants to the title. It's their first title in San Francisco since they moved there, um, and the first time they won it since 1954. Now, uh, Renteria had struggled uh, pretty heavily during the season, Um, You know, he only played in 72 games, and in the NLCS, he went one for 16, but he had a whopping 412 in the World Series, and he'll be out of baseball uh, after the the next season, the 2011 season. And our birthday boy is Vic Power. Now, uh, if you look here on the player page, if you've never been to one of our player pages, uh, we got some cool stuff here. We call it the essentials here. We have their birth, their birth. debuts, their, their, game, their last game played, and we get nicknames and a lot lot more stuff. And we also have players that uh, debuted the same year as them. Power uh, de- debuted in 1954 with players like Hank Aaron, Harmon Killebrew, um, Wally Moon, Don Zimmer. So it's really cool to actually be able to relate the players that way. Now, Power, um, he was a really um, stylish, exuberant player. Um, and he was born in um, 1927 in Puerto Rico. Uh, and he was a great first baseman. He won seven gold gloves. He didn't win just seven gold gloves. He won the first seven gold gloves. And he made a lot of flashy plays over there. Uh, 
catches with a, uh, he had this one handed style with a wide sweeping motion and he led fielders in every category. Now, an interesting fact about him is um, he hits 349 in 1953 um, in the American Association, and he is on the same team as Elson Howard, and they were both brought up to the Yankees, um, and they were going to be the first um, black players on the Yankees, but he was traded uh, before the season to the Athletics. Super good contact hitter, hits 300 three times in his dozen uh, major league seasons. Um, he was not a big base deal. One of my really uh, fun facts about him is he actually stole home twice in one game against the Tigers in 1958. Now, before I get to the trivia, I just want to kind of send you a special invite uh, to join my baseball community at tomsvintagebaseball.com. Now, this is a place where you can relive baseball history through the voices of the past. There's hundreds of interviews spanning back players to the turn of the century. The century. Old baseball broadcasts, you can hear Ty Tyson and Red Barber and Vin Scully and Mel Allen. It's, um, it really brings you back to the roots of baseball, and it's that thing that really connects us to our past. You can do it with your friends as a group or at your own convenience. There's thousands of audio clips, um, like I said, from interviews all the way to games. Um, start listening today at TomsVintageBaseball.com. Now, uh, just wrapping this up here on... Uh, uh, today's trivia, today's birthday boy is Vic Power, and he became the first more modern day player on May 7th, 1957, to hit a leadoff home run and a walkoff home run in the same game. The first player to do it was Sliding Billy Hamilton, uh, Hall of Famer, uh, who did this in 1893. And then there was Darren Erstad, who was 43 years after Vic Power. He accomplished it on June 25th, 2000. And just a few years later, in 2003, Reed Johnson uh, did it on the 15th of June. Then Ian Kinsler, uh, six years later, on July 9th, 2009. And wrapping it up was Chris Young, just 13 months after Kin Kinsler, on August 7th, 2010. Now that's it for this day in baseball, November 1st. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. Uh, please share us, subscribe us, give us a review, and we hope to see you tomorrow.